तोड़ू आकड़ मैं हूँ डेंजर लड़की धाकड़ गलती से ना कट कर देना तू मेरी वायर शीज ऑन फायर ये शीज ऑन शीज ऑन फायर ऑसम कंग्रेचुलेशन निकिता गांधी दैट वाज ऑफ कोर्स योर न्यू सॉन्ग टाइटल शीज ऑन फायर and looks like you're also on fire despite of being in this in this hot summers the song of course uh, is filmed on kangaranath uh, so how much pressure you had or were you nervous when you recorded this song a uh, funny story is uh, for the shoot of the song when uh, so bacha he uh, you know he messaged me he was like we need like can you dub today and i was out of town for recording so for the shoot of the song i actually dubbed from a hotel room uh, so that they could have my voice for the shoot uh, mix and then i would you know sing in a studio later on just to replace that vo- the vocals so i went into the cupboard of the hotel room <laughs> and sang it uh, on my ipad for the shoot mix and then um, of course once it was and then that time uh, i think the rap part was not there or there or i think he they used his voice for it and then uh, later on i went to the studio and i did the rap so everything was done virtually um but i mean since i worked with bacha before like i know his like you know i've built that comfort zone with him so i know it's always going to be like super random <laughs> but uh, but he's like really sweet and um, you know it gives me a lot of creative liberty and i think i've understood his vibe he's understood my vibe so it's super fun to work with him you know you did a very beautiful album uh, a begali album album called kota much before you started uh, your singing career how did that happen and were you a fan of the uh, the poet uh, bengali poet kazi nazrul islam yes uh, so yeah i'll just uh, correct you it's kotha kotha means um, just uh, you know story or saying having something to say so um, I've learned Hindustani classical as a kid, and uh, the funny thing about my childhood and Bengali music is that you know usually everybody learns uh, Tagore songs. Rabindranath Tagore is the most celebrated uh, artist, and I've always been a little scared of Rabindra Shongis because yeah. um, I think people are very a little very like too emotional about Rabindra Shongis. Like you can't sing it your own way, and I've always been a very interpretive singer. like i love singing everything in my own way and like i i want to be able to express it in my own way and this that was that's always been one topic that i have been all afraid to explore even though there's there was a rovindra shongi singer in my family i think maybe that was all the more reason why i stayed away from it because i didn't want to have any conflict <laughs> of interests and uh, my singing teacher um Shapna aunty, like I've learned informally from her. I used to go to a house and learn in my uh, complex, and she introduced me to to Nojul Geet. In fact, she used to make my dad listen to. Uh, he she used to make my dad learn Nojul Geet. Then the songs are a little more complex for a six seven year old. Uh, so you know, I used to pick up the songs from my dad, and then when I grew a little older, she started teaching. So I found the melodies really beautiful. I felt like he was. such an unexplored artist uh, when it comes to you know because of being a contemporary of tagore uh, i really felt like he deserved as much adulation and um, so it it was it was literally a passion project me and my my dad also sang in that album so it was re- just a passion project of ours and uh, between my second and third year of college is when we put together the album so yeah i didn't i didn't have plans to be a playback singer but uh, i did always have music in my life <laughs> so then please give a few lines from kotha the album any fav- of your favorite song yeah absolutely so this one is one of my favorites it's called elo shamalo kishor uh it's about krishna and like the, this is what actually this is one of the things i really loved about kazi nazrul islam was um, he was a muslim poet and he wrote songs about everything like he wrote uh, about hindu muslims being you know living harmoniously he wrote songs about nature he wrote uh, songs about hindu um, gods and there was no like he was so secular and i just loved that about his song writing shamulo kishor tamalo dalle pa 
Nikita, you of course got training, like you said, in Hindustan, Hindustani classical music, much before you joined ARMR's music conservatory. So, uh, did you have to unlearn something or something that came in, in conflict with your training of the classical music? So, um, when I was, I was actually studying dentistry in Chennai, and that's when I uh, came across uh the conservatory and um so i obviously had to join a part-time course i couldn't do the course that was meant for professional uh singers uh and so i did a part-time course which was m mostly like operatic singing and a little bit of uh theory western classical theory which i already knew some of because of uh playing the guitar but um i think i never really felt like i had to unlearn anything because I feel like everything is applicable and everything is interchangeable. So uh, that's what I love about, I think, different art forms in general. That, you know, it's how you, what you choose to take from it, what you, how you choose to make it your own. And that's how I felt about whatever I learned then. And whatever, I, you know, every even in life, even if you're not enrolled in anything, you're constantly learning things. And... Um, the beauty is that instead of unlearning anything, you just keep kind of modifying and adapting to the new things that come your way. Talking about new things, we of course talking about Indian classical music. So what's your uh, day's routine like and how much riyaz do you do every day? And is there a new raga that you're current, currently practicing on? Wow, I feel like such a bad student with this question. <laughs> um, so one thing that uh, because I've learned, like I've I started with Hindustani. Before that, I mean a year before I started learning music, I was learning Odissi. Uh, I mean that both continued simultaneously. But I felt like a lot of it, like I said before, was an interchange. You know, like there was so much music and dance, and I a lot of that I imbibed the talas and you know so many things that I learned percussively also through through dance and um, so when it comes to riyaz i don't have a spe it's not like i do everything in hindustani there are days i do western classical trills or like western trills like you know which are more like, like you know so do la fa mi that kind of stuff which is just it's all actually you know again it's the same thing in a different language so uh, some days I like day before yesterday, I, you know, I felt really guilty for not doing riyas for many days because what happens is when you have a lot of sessions and you're traveling and you're doing shows, um, more often than not, you need voice rest than riyas, you know, like because you're so, you're straining so much and you're uh, throwing your voice so much that I feel like there are more days that, that I just want to not speak, forget sing, you know, because I just want to. Uh, recuperate from the previous day so there are some days like that and then there are some days when I feel guilty about not riazing and then I do uh, like a couple of hours of riaz and so it's every day is different but I think um, there's a lot of I truly believe that listening is a is as important uh, you know a, a practice as constantly um, giving riaz to your voice talking about the party songs do you think mm -hmm. You have an anglicized inflection in your voice. Does that sometimes limit you? Uh, to st in the start, a lot of people would criticize um, that. But somehow it has become my ammunition. Um, because in the beginning, I, I, a lot of people would be like, you know, thoda or desi karo and like, 
ज्यादा अंग्रेजी हो रहा है और बट आई फील लाइक स्लोली स्लोली दैट्स बिकम आई थिंक like you know people are finding it i think also because the scape has changed in the industry like music has become a little more uh, in the world actually like there's so many cross collaborations in different countries that music has just become a little universal and i feel like suddenly what was not what was my weakness is now my strength nikita dhyan chan from manmarji i have this quirky lyrics like dhyan ki the dhyan chan and this is of course a non lip sync song what was the brief that amit trivedi gave you for dhyanchan i love that you picked that song uh, i think dhyanjan was the second recording i've done for him i probably kafirana or something kafirana was recorded more than a year before the song released and was kafirana was one of my first few recordings with him then i came um, to the studio he called they called me and you know he was like तुम पंजाबी में रैप कर पाओगी मैंने कहा देर ओनली वन वे टू फाइंड आउट आप माइक के सामने डाल दो बस लिखने को मत बोलना लिरिक्स में लिख नहीं पाऊंगी लिखे हैं तो मैं कर दूंगी और आई थिंक ही वॉज प्लेजेंटली सरप्राइज बिकॉज आई डू हैव लिटल लाइक बॉयस ट्रिप्स एनर्जी टॉम बॉयस एनर्जी विच कम्प्लीटली ट्रांसलेटेड इन दिस सॉन्ग तो हर गाने में आई हैव गॉटन टू लिव अ सर्टन part of my personality like dhyan chand was my complete tomboy version uluka patha was my like very westernized um nikita and like every song has a different version of the of the singer you know so yeah <laughs> that was a super fun song to sing so Dude, rap i was a rapper <laughs> and which part of dhyan chand came naturally to you and so you okay this to i can do on back of my mind because you know like it's there's a lot of like most of bollywood playback is a lot of like your your head voice and your like the patli awaz which you know because people are also so used to a soprano female voice in 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 the female or you know depicting the female i have in fact throughout my life i've been singing like jazz songs in like i've been an alto in the school choir i would sing like you know uh you know like uh, love me tender love me true like that's my um that's my where i thought my voice belong you know and of course it got stretched to so many different poles during my bollywood career which i also am pleasantly surprised with you know i would never have thought i would have sung a kafirana or a rapta or au kavi haveli pe and um so yeah dhyan chand was like my the full like gundi in me came out basically <laughs> so it was very natural for me to do that song do you have a favorite part of that song no 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 dhyan kithe ha kithe dhyan kithe ha kithe dhyan kithe like that's my favorite part <laughs> and finally nikita you have worked with air rahman to pritam to amit trivedi um, so what kind of prep uh, uh, goal you go through when you record with these tall world especially with song like dilulu ka patta hai uh, with pritam da i think uh, what i've realized is to you know like it's we have to live by the scouts honor always be prepared <laughs> because you don't know what you're going to like be given you know a lot i mean usually you know what song you're singing when you reach the studio and what's the vibe and i think now i've been getting a little like prep time but initially it was always like aaj you know you enter the studio now today is party nikki and then you enter the next studio probably in the same day and now it's romantic so uh, the always be prepared is the motto <laughs> thank you so much and best of luck and in the end may be request you to maybe give us a medley of your favorite song ooh okay i'll try to mix mix up my song जाना हो जहा वही जाता है दिलो का पट्टा है थोड़ी तक देर क्यों आजमाता है दिल सोसा का छिट्टा है
दिला दे मैनु बुर्ज खलीफा आ मैनु बुर्ज खलीफा ओ मैनु बुर्ज खलीफा आ मैनु बुर्ज खलीफा ऑटो मेरे बैनर नी शब्द मेरे बैनर नी लोग तो जेलस कह दिए काली जानर नी मेरे हुसन दे चर्चे चर्चे मेरे हुसन दे चर्चे चर्चे लंदन टू अमेरिका मुंडे आ दिला दे बुर्ज खलीफा आ बुर्ज खलीफा ओ बुर्ज खलीफा